Chemistry is the study of the composition, structure, and properties of matter, as well as the changes that that matter undergoes. So when we talk about composition of matter, we mean what elements it's made of, what compounds it's made of, what atoms it's made of, how many of each atom there are. Its structure would be, you know, does it have a bent shape or does it have a triangular shape or a ring shape? Properties of matter would be its boiling point, its melting point, whether it's flammable, and then the changes it undergoes would be the, how it behaves in chemical reactions. Chemistry is a science that is central to all the other sciences. You'll see chemistry showing up in biology, and you'll see chemistry showing up in physics. And so as we study chemistry this year, I'll try to apply it to biological sciences as well as physical sciences. And when we study chemistry, we study chemicals, and chemicals are any substance that has a definite composition. When we study chemistry, we are often talking about different types of chemicals. A chemical is any substance that has a definite composition. An example of a chemical would be sugar or sucrose. So sucrose is the white sugar that you buy in the grocery store that you sprinkle on your cereal, and it has a certain number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. That same composition of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygen is also found in cane sugar, where the plant actually makes that sugar through a process of photosynthesis. When we do chemistry, we often need to use a lot of different tools. One of those tools we'll use on a regular basis is an electronic balance, where we'll find the mass of these different chemicals. Another tool that we'll use is a centrifuge. So how the centrifuge works is you put little test tubes down into this machine, and it spins them really fast, and it causes the mixture to separate. It's kind of like that ride at the fair where you put your back up against the wall and the floor drops out from underneath you. It's like a big, gigantic human centrifuge. Uh, when you get into college chemistry, it is possible that you might use a scanning electron microscope. And these microscopes are these really large microscopes that are used to study microstructures. So a microstructure is any structure that is too small to see with the naked eye. You would need a microscope in order to see it. Another tool scientists often use in chemistry are x-rays. If you remember from biology, this black and white picture in the right hand corner is a picture of an x-ray that was taken by Rosalind Franklin. In that picture, she was able to figure out that the structure of the DNA was a double helix, where these dark spots here on the outside was the backbone, like the sugar phosphate backbone of the double helix, and that this X that ran down the middle, like this and here, was the nitrogen bases that ran through the middle. And so you can figure out what the actual structure of different chemicals are using X-rays or scanning electron microscopes. For our class this year, the two tools that we will most often use are the electric balance and the centrifuge. There are many different branches of chemistry. The largest one is called organic chemistry, and this is the branch of chemistry that studies all compounds that contain carbon. Another branch is inorganic chemistry, and these would be the study of non-organic compounds or compounds that don't contain carbon. Physical chemistry studies the relationship between matter and energy. So if you are burning something, how much energy is given off by that compound? Analytical chemistry is a branch of chemistry that studies the composition of materials. Often you can think of analytical chemistry as what you would see on like CSI, where you find a compound or a chemical residue at the scene of a crime and you want to figure out what it is, and so you're analyzing it to figure out what elements it's made of. Biochemistry is the study of compounds that occur in living things, so glucose or DNA or proteins. And then there's also theoretical chemistry, and this is the kind of chemistry that uses math programs, computer programs to understand the principles of chemical behavior. So there's often a lot of modeling or predicting going on in theoretical chemistry. And sometimes theoretical chemistry can also be used to design new compounds or to design compounds that have certain properties. In our class, we will primarily be working in inorganic chemistry and physical chemistry. So most of the chemistry we are going to be doing are compounds that are non-organic, so they don't have carbon in them. Um, and then we'll be studying the relationships between matter and energy and how those compounds behave when they react with each other. Last major thing about basic chemistry is that all of the scientific knowledge that we are gaining comes through research, and there are three different types of research. 
One type is basic research, and this is the kind of research that is done to just increase general knowledge. So if you want to figure out how a particular chemical behaves, what its properties are, maybe you want to figure out which drug is best for reducing um, certain lipids in your blood or your, the cholesterol in your blood. You can also do applied research, and this is the kind of research that helps you to solve a problem. It used to be in refrigerators they used a compound that contained a chemical called CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. And when that refrigerant leaked out of the refrigerator, those CFCs evaporated into the air and that led to the depletion of the ozone layer. So once we figured out that that was a problem, then there was all of this applied research to figure out if we could come up with a new chemical that would be just as good at refrigerating things without causing environmental problems. And then the last major type of research is called technological development. And these are the type of research that helps us to create products that increase our quality of life. Um, examples of technological development would be creating compounds to use in computer chips or catalytic converters in cars so to help reduce the amount of pollution that's going off into the air or possibly creating products that are biodegradable rather than non-biodegradable so that they break down after we throw them away.